Hello everyone, Jose Rodriguez here. I hope you enjoyed my last video concerning nozzle checks and block nozzles and how to use perch sheets and so on. But you know what? I'm gonna rant a little bit about my favorite subject. Oh, ink is so expensive. I can't believe that a set of cartridges is gonna cost me $500 for this printer, $700 for that other printer, $115 for this printer. You mean you didn't know that when you got into it, when you bought that printer? Or was the uh, special sale and rebate offer so tempting that it just glossed you? You were in a trance when you pressed that purchase button. No excuses, the information is there you know exactly how much it's going to cost. If you're doing this for money, you have to incorporate that cost of the inks in your prints that you are selling, your work. You have to do that. Like with any other price point strategy that you create for any business, you have to include the cost of production, your time, your efforts, how much are you worth, all of that. So don't be surprised when you get into printing that is going to cost you money. And then the other favorite little line that I love to hear is blah, 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 blah. I'm going to buy this. I'm interested in buying that, but I am a very infrequent printer. No, don't get the printer. Do not, do not, do not, do not. Why are you going to do that? I always use the puppy analogy. You're going to buy that $700 puppy and ignore it. Only walk it once a month. And it's going to sit in that room pooping and peeing and doing all the nasty things. It's not being fed. It's not being exercised. It will die, right? So will your printer. Why are you doing this? Why are you buying a printer that, if you don't consider the rebates as the poor people in Canada and Europe have to deal with, just us Americans get these rebates from Canon, just because you're getting it cheap does not mean that you can then just say, oh, well, you know, I can't afford to use this printer any longer, then why buy it? There are lots of nice photo labs in many cities and online as well. It doesn't matter where you live that you can just send your infrequent work to. Let them print it for you. What? You don't have control? Ah, magic words, control. That is the luxury that you are paying the big bucks for. If you want that, then and accept the fact that inks are expensive, even when you refill. I'm refilling these cartridges here. It's not super cheap to refill either because I'm using OEM and I'm using original OEM inks, original manufacturer's equipment inks from large cartridges that are still $225 per cartridge times 12. That's a lot of money, isn't it? Well, I knew that when I bought this printer. I accepted that. If you cannot accept that, then you're not a candidate for one of these printers or the, the luxury of printing photos at home. I hate to be a hard ass, but that is the actual honest to God truth. When you buy one of these printers, you're stuck now, my friends. You are stuck with a printer that's gonna cost you an arm and a leg practically if you're using OEM, especially if you're selling. If you're selling, Quit complaining, don't argue. Just add that price point. What, someone else is undercutting you? Oh well, that's the way business is. So this puppy right here, $700 for a complete cartridge change. Original cartridges, that is. I am refilling my own. I'm using the so-called permanent chips. They used to be called auto reset chips. We'll talk about that because there's gonna be some information coming from China about what the hell is going on with these chips? They don't react the same way as so-called auto reset chips in the past. They are acting really strange. They're not resetting. Is it the firmware? Is it the whatever? Who knows? Well, Chinese New Year's is, is in China right now. Everyone is off. So no one can tell us anything at the manufacturing plant where these are made or the distributors that sell them. So we have to wait a few more days and we'll get the actual nitty gritty, if you will. And I'll pass that information on to you. Firmware, could it be firmware? Mine is an old firmware. Everyone has a newer firmware than I do. Am I gonna be the lucky one? Are you guys the unlucky ones? 
No one knows. It's like the P800. We bought that printer thinking, oh gosh, it's going to be fabulous. They promised all of these improvements. Guess what? You can't use third-party products. It's locked. Is that nasty or what? Well, whatever. What It is what it is. And so then that is a printer that must be used with OEM inks. And that's going to be what? About $500 for a set of cartridges. Yeah, we, we, we knew that. We kind of knew that. And so if you refill, you may cut that in half, maybe in a fourth. And still a lot of money being used for these printers. And yet you think you're going to get away with by saving money. Okay, that's the, that's the fallacy that I hear all the time. If I don't print often, I'll save a lot of money. Well, you know what? My expensive ink, I would rather put it on prints than dump it into the maintenance cartridge of this machine or the maintenance cartridge of that P800 or, God forbid, the waste ink pads that are buried inside those other four Canon printers over there. Every time I do not print for a given number of hours, whatever I print next, whether it's one of these or a beautiful image, will be preceded by a cleaning cycle. And often, the cleaning cycle is larger than the volume-wise, wasting more ink than what I actually use to produce my so-called valuable print. Because this is not valuable. You cannot sell this. So this is useless. This is, this is only a tool to help you unclog your machine or keep it exercise. So all of your ink is being wasted, okay? Does anyone tell you this? Absolutely not. I think I'm the only dude on the internet that is honest enough to tell you exactly what the hell is going on behind the scenes with these printers. And it's just not something for you to get into lightly, okay? Especially if you're gonna get a couple of printers, one for this and one for that. It's a, there's a lot of commitment going in there. So please, please, please consider really seriously before you go and hit that button for purchasing a printer because, oh, the deal, I cannot pass it up this weekend. Forget it. It's like car dealers. They have deals every weekend. Every holiday, there's a deal. The same thing with these companies. Don't think that this deal is going to go away and it's never going to reappear again. Don't worry about it. Watch that long 50-minute, 10-part video I created a while back. I walk you through everything you should consider before you actually pull the trigger and buy a printer just because you want to have the luxury and the ability to control everything before we end. Controlling everything means that you don't have to worry about sending that image via the internet and two days later the print comes to you. Maybe a week later, who knows? Depends where you live. And you open that envelope eagerly and you look at it and you go, oh, this is not quite what I wanted. You got to go back and you got to, unless you got the, the lab right down the corner where you can just walk down and, and, and you know the guy that's actually printing it for you, you got to deal with all these unknowns. You may not get what you wish. The only way you get what you wish is when you can go back to your computer immediately and adjust something. And if your printer and computer are calibrated correctly, talking to each other and getting along just dandy, whatever you do over there should be reflected over here. And that's the luxury that you pay the big bucks for, the aggravation for, the need to run cleaning cycles for, the need to run perch sheets, the need to do nozzle checks, <laughs> profiling, everything that comes into this, this field, profiling your monitor or calibrating your monitor, buying the equipment to do that with. Yeah, get it? I hope you get it. I'm being a, as frank and honest as I possibly can. I will tell you, I don't print every day on all of my printers. Of course I don't. I just can't. There's just, just I don't have enough stuff to print. This one gets to print maybe once a week. I had a batch of 200 prints that I made on this one. Took me two days to do that. The first one had a cleaning cycle because I had already gone beyond a certain number of hours, whatever that happens to be. We don't know what it is for this, okay? We really don't. The first print generated a clean cycle. All 199 following prints did not. 
because apparently I was able to finish that job before the next hourly, whatever you want to call it, where the next cleaning cycle is triggered. Why do they do that? Well, I discussed that in another video, but I'll give you a quick review on that. Pigment inks, dye inks on thermal printheads produce residue. The more you print, the more residue. So that's counterintuitive, right? You think the more you print, the cleaner your nozzles are going to become. No, this particular technology requires cleaning cycles or flushes to take place at certain intervals of time. That's the secret. Okay, hope you guys know that. If some printers don't run cleaning cycles, oh, heck yes, they do. Of course they do. If I don't print for two weeks of my P800, the very next print job. And I happened to do that just a little while ago. And guess what? The cleaning cycle that I ran before the print started to print, the image started to print, was rather long. The print still came out crappy. You know what? My black channel was clogged from lack of use. I had to run a manual cleaning cycle and that cleared it up. So what's the lesson here? I should have printed more often on that printer and I did not. So there you go. That's what happens. How much ink did I waste? Probably enough ink for several 16 by 20s. You see what I mean? And I totally wasted all of that ink because I did not use my printer often enough. So think twice, three times, four times, 50 times before you click that button when you purchase a high-end photo printer and you're a photographer, a hobbyist, whatever. Think, think, think. Do I really want to do this? And if I do, am I willing to then commit fully to this process? And it requires a lot of commitment. All right, that is it. No more talk. All right. Don't forget to subscribe as always. And by the way, oh yeah, by the way, I hope to have this up tomorrow, which is Monday. Today is Sunday evening. Now, Wednesday, totally unrelated to printing. Okay, maybe a little bit related to it. We're going to talk about aerial photography, and that involves drones that are capable of high-end photography and videography. If you're not into this, don't come to the live stream. But if you're curious even that much, please come at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, just like Saturday evenings. We're going to talk drones. I'm going to show you some of the drones that I have. Some of them are just toys, and that's what you used to train with. And then I'm going to show you my premier set of drones, which is what I use for my videography and photography from the air, which is a totally different perspective and one that is just once you see it, you just cannot go back to the ground. OK, so thank you so much. Again, don't forget to subscribe, share and like and happy printing. Hopefully happy flying everyone. Bye bye. Sorry about the rant. <laughs>